Hello people, I'm Vito, and welcome back to Star Wars Rogue Squadron with Robolink. Hello. Alright, where we last left off, I'm trying to think, did we do, we did Fest, and alright, yeah, a raid on Solust. So I went back to this mission to get the secret, apparently there was like an ATST off on the side of the city when you're taking care of the bombers actually bombing the city. Hmm. And if you destroy that ATSD, it has a bonus. And it said it was advanced bombs, but we already got advanced bombs, so I guess I didn't really get anything. Uh, but yes, now we are on uh, Moff Sirden's Revenge. Here, let me not interrupt. By leading Rogue Squadron to Sullust, Moff Sirden has secretly captured the Vacta supplies of Thyphira, and now intends to cut off medical supplies to the Alliance. Free Thyphira and defeat Sirden once and for all. That's right. When we finished this one, they said it was a trap. It was like a distraction. Uh, uh yeah. All right. By leading Rogue Squadron to Solus, also, um, side tangent for a moment. So, today, I let my computer update. It's like April 6th. And um, when it came back on, because, you know, it says it'll restart during the update. Right. It always does that. Um, there was just a black screen with like a, a blinking underscore on the upper left. I looked that up on my laptop, and it says, oh, that means the, um, the boot device wasn't found. What does that mean? I, probably that <laughs> something about the hard drive has failed or something. Oh. And, you know, I was really worried because, you know, if the computer has failed or whatnot, that's a problem. Then we can't use it. And if it is somehow still updating, you don't want to interrupt that. That'll screw up your PC. So I was really scared about it, but I tried turning it off and back on, and then it just continued updating. Like nothing happened. Oh, okay. <laughs> and because I had told it to update and shut off, then it shut itself off after it was done updating. Okay. <laughs> Just give me a freaking heart attack, why don't you? Yeah, you know, keep you on your toes. <sighs> that was annoying. But it lives another day for us to record on. <laughs> this is it. Cythera. Be careful, team. We've got to hit Imperial targets only. Avoid civilian casualties at all costs. We can't afford to lose those back to containers, so be careful. Pick your targets and go. Wait, there's a rebel base, right? That they're taking over? How'd they get frickin' missile turrets here already? <laughs> oh, hello. Frickin' missile. They work fast, obviously. Here we go. Ouch. Yeah, this is weird because I think those installations are also Imperial because they're right on the map. Yeah. Hmm. Unless they're just buildings that look identical to the Imperial ones that have been taken over. I don't know. Could be. It's probably just like, uh, we don't want to create new assets. Yeah. Watch out for those factor containers. Did an ally shoot one or something? Or probably. Oh. Could be oh. these guys. Nah. Um, was that there before on the bottom left? Uh, what, the red thing? Yeah. It's a counter for my secret proton torpedoes. Huh. It was probably a different color before the upgrades. I think yellow is the intermediate one, so probably green was the regular ones. Hmm. Uh, I don't think it fired. My torpedo, I'm not sure. Alright, uh, where are you? <laughs> okay. He was nearly avoiding the ground. I made him hit it anyway. <laughs> Get back over here. That oh. does look pretty cool. Gotcha. Alright. Yeah, I know the objective is now pointing that way, but I think it's just multiple places. Yeah, it's pointing whichever you go. Yeah, whichever's nearest. And just one building there. Oh! Uh-huh. Sir, we found some cluster seeker missiles. <laughs> cluster seeker <laughs> missiles. <laughs> Unfortunately, that only applies to one aircraft or, you know, spacecraft, whatever. So it won't replace these. But it is fun. Once we get there. All right. Alright, so for the most part, this seems like just cleaning up a few buildings and, uh, 
avoiding a few interceptors. Hey, you're about to crash, aren't you? Well, <laughs> I didn't mean to kill you that way, but I couldn't... Oh, I just uh, hip bump you. <laughs> couldn't get a good angle. Oh, well. Uh, there's one of you. Think my... Was that Imperial building you passed? There might have been... Hold on. The left? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Go away. Ah. I've lost R2. Stop that. I was busy targeting a building. Whoop. You're not a building? Ah. <laughs> Fine, it'll have to do. Some uh, interesting techniques. <laughs> They're not intentional, I assure you. <laughs> Okay, what's left? Help me out here. Ah! Oh, that's a bomber. Help me out here. Ah! Sorry, too late. I'm clear, but my fighter is down. Stop that. There we go. I know those buildings look like nice and flat topped and easily bombable, but don't. Didn't do it. Stop. No bomby. <laughs> but I want to beat the giant bongo drums with my bombs. <laughs> there we go. It's kind of like something you'd see in anime music. <laughs> Those pulse is hitting the bon the bongo drums. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. What is left? Other than the things I'm not supposed to destroy. Oh, hello. Here's my downed ally. You suck! <laughs> I say as I'm about to frickin' die myself. But you're not dead. Yet. Therefore, you have <laughs> clearance to mock him. You have bragging rights. Thank you, Commander Skywalker. So you're the young man who destroyed the Death Star. Mark Searden. Do you wish to surrender now? Oh. <laughs> that was quite rude. You interrupted what you were saying. <laughs> you interrupted yourself, idiot. <laughs> well, now I got a fresh batch of missiles, too. You want some? Oh. Interesting choice. Taking a shuttle as your uh, primary combat vehicle. Ah, you're a very talented pilot. You have learned much, Skywalker. It seems like an armed transport of some sort. Too bad you didn't join the Empire. I could have used a pilot with your skills. Ah! Hmm. Alright. Woohoo! Great job, Rogue Squadron! The Imperial will get my fear now. Hey! Hey, where are you? Down on the ground, still waiting for someone to pick me up. Oh, I'm on you. my way, Kaven. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> nah, get good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm wondering if uh, these missions weren't uh, necessarily balanced with your upgrades in mind, at least on the first run through. Uh, I don't know. Like for some of the missions, you it's really hard to get gold unless you go back after you've gotten, especially the laser upgrade. Hmm. But now that we have them from Talaran, that's nice. The world devastators are raining destruction on the peaceful world of Mon Calamari. Fly as Wedge Antilles and battle against all odds to stop their evil conquest. Yeah, so here, this is the point where I remember it might be jumping ahead story-wise, but we're not playing as Luke. We're using different uh, craft that was not even available before, I don't think, for the most part. Unless it might have already been available for the first few missions now. But we are using... The V-Wing. Not the same as the V-Wing that you see in uh, Battlefront that 2. That is not my V-Wing. <laughs> this is my V-Wing. And once you see its secondary weapon, you'll, you'll know why it's good. Anyway, let's see what he has to say about it. This is a new craft. Fast, light, and unpredictable. The V-Wing carries two blaster cannons which can be fired at a normal rate or in the rapid-fire position. Rapid-fire is useful for strafing ground targets. It overloads the cooling units and can often cause a complete burnout. In addition, the 
Thrust engines have been modified to supply an incredible amount of power over a short distance. These are generally used to evacuate a pilot from a dangerous area, as the V-Wing carries no shields and very little armament. That said, the V-Wing is extremely nimble and stealthy, and is an even match for most adversaries. So I wonder, even though he said no shields, I wonder if the advanced shields will still apply. Hmm. Because that would be nice, to actually have shields. Yeah, I thought it was still kind of default level of defense, but I guess it is weaker. Kind of like the A-Wing in that regard. Didn't quite remember that. Yeah, I had kind of forgotten about that. There's a, a secondary mode on the primary fire as well. Interesting. I'll need to figure out what the controls are for it. Yeah, so this might explain it if this is further ahead in time. OMG, Star Wars lore? <laughs> Chapter 4. Dark Empire. It got darker. Okay, yeah, six years after the Battle of Endor, so this is after even the second Death Star, the fight for freedom continues. Even without the thousands of Jedi Knights who formed the backbone of the Old Republic, the Rebel Alliance has managed to control three quarters of the galaxy. Darth Vader is dead, but a reborn Empire, under a mysterious new leader, strikes back at the struggling Rebel Alliance, hoping to crush the fledging New Republic. Massive world devastators, more powerful and unstoppable than the Death Star, ravage entire planets. Rogue Squadron, which is now commanded by Wedge Antilles, persists in mounting daring missions throughout the galaxy. Yeah, I remember these Devastators. They remind me a bit of the Decimators in uh, Galactic Battlegrounds, if you remember those, but they work completely differently. But they have a slightly similar name, and they're really powerful. Huh. All right. Now that I think about it, I wonder if these Devastators are kind of like an evolution of the at, -AT? You'll see why. <laughs> but yes, no longer playing as Luke for some reason. Wonder what he's off doing at this moment. Hmm. Oh, we died. Dang. <laughs> Game over. Back we go. These things were not made for atmospheric re-entry. <laughs> Oh, that's right. There's like a different form of TIE fighter. Oh. I think it might be a TIE drone. This is Commander Wedge Antilles of Rogue Squadron. We are coming to your assistance. Yeah, I think back when I first played this, it, it felt weird. It's like, huh? Everything seems a little... If not completely different, Luke's gone. What's going yeah. on? Sir, the Devastators are getting close to the city. But yeah, it's because it's farther ahead. All right, so here's this boost. Ooh. Yeah, so I have a boost ability that he mentioned. Uh, here. Is there an enemy? Not sure. Okay. Oh, wait. It activated on its own <laughs> right after the cooldown, I guess, because I pressed the button. Huh. Oh yeah, they have like a vacuum thing that you you have to avoid. This is Rogue 3. Sir, my R2 has found a weak spot. It's a shield generator on top. If we destroy it, we have a better chance of taking these things down. Yeah, so these things are shielded, but it, it's like not a visible shield. Huh. And I think that's the generator. Ouch. You might want to target the turrets? I don't think I can. They're shielded, right? Oh. Jeez. Yeah, I didn't hit it, or I didn't hurt it. I saw, like, blue stuff coming off of it. It's the same effect that you see when you hit something with the uh, ion cannon, but in this case, it means it's shielded. Ah, uh, okay. Um, let me see if my link button is the rapid fire. Yeah, that got it. Let's take out the link jet. If we destroy the link, the Devastator has no propulsion. All right. Now what I remember having to do is shoot these. Oh, it's still on rapid fire. I guess it's possible to cause it to overheat. Oh, wait. Oh, oh. I only need to get rid of two. All right. Inbound fighters at 1013. 
Let me turn it off for this, though. Okay, here. Cluster missiles. And they home in now, because I picked up the upgrade last mission. Alright. Yeah, that's what I remember. This ship is fun. Where are the fighters? Oh, they're down there, that's why. Alright, good. What's next? Interesting. So, um... I don't know, those things don't seem... They, they seem dangerous, but I wouldn't say they're more deadly than the Death Star. Just saying. Whoop. Oh, do I have, like, a speed reduction after the boost? Ouch. That hurts. Because it went faster again after a while, so I wonder if that's huh. the case. All right. More fighters inbound on one seven decimal two eight. Yeah, I think it's it's probably something to do with the the vacuum suction thing it has in the back. I wonder if it like if it's like a mobile factory, that might be it. So if they have like a an entire enormous fleet of them, I think that's why they're so dangerous. Huh. Whoa. These things look at least similar to something from Galactic Battlegrounds. I don't know if they actually are though. Yeah, I, I was just like, where are those the freaking cargo hovercraft? they use to trade resources? There's something behind me. Frick off, I'm busy. Do I have a better turn rate than you? I guess I kind of do. Hello. Come on. Get him eventually. It's hard to figure out how far I need to freaking lead this thing. I'm sure the city can wait. A ring around the rosy. Well, I got him once. There we go. Jeez. <laughs> hey, guys. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait. Come back around. Uh, where are you now? Okay, I guess this is also a repulsor craft because I cannot fully go around up or down. Can't, huh. I can't do a full loop. Oop. Looked like you crashed into that. Where are you? Yeah, I guess these drone things are a little more annoying than regular fighters at points, if I remember correctly. Hmm. They're pretty nimble, despite not being interceptors. Oop. So it's kind of interesting how it said that this is, like, the Empire under new leadership. Yeah. I think, from what I know... Uh, the moths, the grand moths, who like kind of like were administrators of uh, larger imperial sectors, like after the second Death Star blew up, like several of them tried to muster their own imperial forces to take over. Hmm. So maybe it is like one of those factions. Great job, Minox. We stopped the devastation. Now let's take out those ties. Yeah, maybe. Calamari isn't safe until those TIE fighters are destroyed. Because I doubt this is, uh... is relevant to the, uh... final trilogy yeah. of Star Wars movies. Probably not, because they seem to have gone their own way. Uh, you're clipping through that. Okay. He doesn't care. Well, we care. You must die. No clipping for you. <laughs> Do not break the reality. Do not break my immersion. This is a game I grew up with and I love very much. Uh, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> the game does not love you very much. Oop. I was going to turn earlier, but then it took my control away because I hit the edge of the map. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm slow now. There we go. Yeah, I, I don't know if I ever realized that before, that it you go slower than normal after your boost. Hmm. I wish you wouldn't do that to me. Nailed it. But yeah, if you stay above those world devastators, because there's so many turrets, yeah, you die super quick, and I forgot about that. That's why I lost my first life. Ah. Uh. Ouch, why? I hope that didn't actually hurt me, you know, because I just respawned. Do you think this game has uh, had the foresight to have uh, Invin spawn invincibility? Invincibility frames? I'm not sure, because my icon was blue before. And then it turned green, so I'm not sure. <clears throat> oh, 
Leave me the frick alone for a sec, so I can get a good angle on you. There you are. Whoop. There he goes. I can't do that. I can't go all the way upside down. Where are you now? There you are. <laughs> ah, that works. <laughs> They're gone. We've completely routed the world devastators. We've taken a lot of damage, rogues. But I want you to know, we saved another world from the Empire. We did well here today. Let's go home. <laughs> Yay. I could have done better. Huh? Wait, accuracy 100%, is that a bug? Ah. Uh... I feel like that's a bug, because I have definitely missed some shots. The only thing I can think of off the top of my head is the cluster missiles count as one shot maybe but since you that could be it yeah if if it's like splitting into seven and all seven hit something that could count as like 700 percent accuracy yeah and the game <laughs> just only caps at 100 percent though yeah so that's the only thing i can assume hmm. well barring that i was actually gold worthy or no silver worthy other than my timing huh probably because of that time you played ring around the rosy with the tie drone <laughs> Yeah, I think it was just like a glimpse at what comes later, because that was the final mission of the main story, I guess. Oh. So, like, is it? There are, however, bonus missions. Oh. So you have to get, um, yeah, all bronze medals minimum for the first one, silver for the second one, and then all gold on the main missions for the third bonus mission. Luckily, I still have my old file from when I did get all the golds, so we can just jump to that. Ah, oh, fantastic. Because I was debating, do I want to try and like do a 100% run on this, but some of the missions... <laughs> I don't know. Also with Talaran, because it can crash. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> and just completely erase your progress in that mission. That would kind of suck. Oh, and I think I, I read somewhere that... I think one of the artists or something, his last name was Hannon, I think. And apparently the Nona is just his name backwards. <laughs> that ship we rescued. But it sounds like a cool name. Yeah. Definitely somehow fits the theme of Star Wars. Yep. Yeah, and I remember all three of the bonus missions. First one's, yeah, not too hard. Second one, I don't recall being hard. Third one might take some doing. And you'll see why, probably, if it's the third one I'm thinking of. All right. Hmm. I was thinking, like, should we wait through the credits? But I have some other things we could talk about. I don't know if I mentioned this, but apparently... You know Homeworld, right? The game? Yes. How much of it did you play? I'm not sure. Uh... It's the one where, like, af like it starts off with you going through a wormhole, right? I'm not sure. Are you or thinking of Nexus? Or Wait, well, wormhole? The thing you sent me on Discord. Uh, that that, that was image. Nexus. Okay. Uh, the homeworld. Uh, is it's that the one with the giant motherships? Yes. Okay. Now we're on the same page. <laughs> I don't know... I guess I might as well bring this up as well. So there's, I think it's like an expansion that's called Homeworld Cataclysm that I never got to work because I had my friend's CDs, he just gave them to me. Homeworld 1, I'm pretty sure worked fine, but Homeworld Cataclysm didn't, so I never really got to play that for myself, but I saw him play it a bit. Um, then there's Homeworld 2, I played a bit of that. Burning goddesses? What? What? What kind of a credit is that? I don't know. <laughs> but... There's been a thing for a long time. There's like been an online petition for Homeworld 3. Apparently it is going to be a real thing. Oh. But it doesn't look as much like the first Homeworld as it does Homeworld 2. And also, there was like a video I saw of someone complaining about like this demo where there's like abilities for some of the units. And like for the bomber, there's just a cloak ability. It turns off automatically when it, it fires, but then you can just turn it right back on. 
So basically that's like infinite cloak, but there's probably like sensors or something you can use to undo that. But also, hmm. like in the first homeworld, for things like capital ships, you can have them move in one direction while facing another and firing in another direction. Apparently you can't do that. What? Yeah, so if that, you tell it to like move away, it'll like, start turning away from the enemy. <laughs> that sounds like... Such a vital component yeah, of space like, combat. Yeah, and like, I don't think a lot of games do that. Why would you get rid of something like that? Yeah, I don't in know. In your franchise. So, unfortunately, it sounds like Homeworld 3 is not going to be particularly amazing. <sighs> but that's, I guess, life. Yeah. I'm still hoping that Metroid Prime 4 will be good whenever mm -hmm. that decides to be finished and released. Uh, about that, I... Well, not Metroid 4, but on topic of Metroid, I did uh, do a little bit of online research, like a Google search, <laughs> a couple Reddit posts, maybe. Which is deep research. Yes, clearly. Uh, apparently, the reason that um, Metroid Prime Federation Force wasn't received so well is because it was the very first Metroid game to come out after Other M. Oh, was it? Apparently, hmm. I think. So, naturally, people saw Other M, and then they saw Federation Force, and they're like, uh, Metroid's, uh, they're not cooking so well with it, are they? Metroid has fallen. Yeah. Um, so that was probably part of the reason it wasn't uh, received so overwhelmingly positively. Yeah. Um, what else was I going to say? Something about Homeworld, or... Oh, wait, about Metroid. Huh. Do you know about the development? Like, why it's taken so long? Uh, that they, like, gave it off to another studio yeah. to work on it for a few years, but then... They weren't satisfied with what they came up with, so they're like... So they... They scrapped it. Gave it back to Retro Studios. Yeah. You've mentioned it. Okay. Just wasn't sure if I did. Mm -hmm. Alright, there's not a whole lot of time left in the episode, so I think what I'll do real quick is maybe go over these. I think this is... Yeah. It says at the bottom information on the Rogue Squadron pilots. Uh -huh. Wedge Antilles, born on Corellia, had a hard life growing up. His parents were freighter pilots, killed trying to save a space station when Wedge was young. He's got a natural ability to lead, and I wouldn't be surprised if someday Wedge became a rogue leader, but he'd much rather be flying missions than attending parades. An excellent pilot, Wedge saved my life at the Death Star, and I owe him. I expect to see Wedge do great things for the Rebellion. Okay, I didn't remember that they were actually voiced. Oh. Huh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, um... Wedge Antilles is, like, the narrator for the Rebel Alliance campaign in Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds. Oh, is he? I think so. It's been so long, I don't remember much about those at all. Hmm. We should do those at some point. I wonder if this, um... I mentioned it in the first episode, this WX... Or no, DXWND that allows it to run in windowed mode. If I could do that for <clears throat> Galactic Battlegrounds as well then it won't be stretched because I think it already runs in full screen. And usually if it's, if it's not, you know, the widescreen aspect ratio and it forces mm. itself into full screen, it's going to stretch itself, which is annoying, but I have a workaround for that now. Probably I have to test it. Well, I'd be, I'd be open to that. Dak is one of the newer, younger pilots and I don't know him as well. He replaced Biggs after the battle of Yavin and is showing promise as an X-Wing pilot. He's still new though, but what he lacks in experience, he makes up an enthusiasm. He sort of reminds me of myself back when all I wanted was a little excitement and a chance to take on the Empire. Hobby is the skeptic of Rogue Group. He doesn't warm up quickly to new ideas, but he never challenges the authority of his superiors. Hobby just does most of his thinking on the inside. You never hear from him unless he has something absolutely crucial to say. He originally trained at the Imperial Academy with Biggs and Porkins, and he jumped ship at the same time they did too. Since then, he's been working in the solar system, running guns. But now he's been chosen to fly with Rogue Squadron. Hmm. I don't recall hearing of someone named Porkins. <laughs> oh well. Because I think this will also have... Zeb is a little older than the rest of us. He's probably got a few stories to tell, but he keeps pretty quiet. He joined up some time ago after the Empire killed his parents for secretly supplying the Rebellion. Since then, he's been a great asset, once holding off three TIE fighters while an Alliance transport fled into hyperspace. I was going to say, I think this even might have some of the defectors in it. Hmm. I 
I've only seen Jansen truly happy when he was manning the guns of a Y-Wing or Snowspeeder. He's a gunner, first and foremost. Wedge swears by his accuracy and knack for hitting small moving targets, like TIE Fighters. Jansen always has a short temper, though. Many is the time we've had to pull him out of a cantina fight, but I would trust him with my life. Kaysen was born on Alderaan and joined the Academy at a pretty young age. She flew TIE Interceptors for the Empire, and eventually they gave her the 128th TIE Interceptor Squadron. She was loyal to the Emperor, but when the Death Star destroyed Alderaan, her feelings began to change. When we met up on Gerard V, she decided to defect and join the Rebel Alliance. Good thing, Kaysen is an ace pilot, definitely one of our best. I think she and Wedge are secretly in competition for the top slot, but I wouldn't want to bet on that race. Okay, so I guess it's only the pilots that are here. Alright then. So it doesn't tell us anything about uh, Crix Madine. Shame. What was his name? Um, General Riken. Hmm. It's so weird because uh, to look up some of the planets that they don't tell us in this, I go to like the Star Wars wiki and there's like two sections. There's like whatever and legends. Yeah, I think legends is like George Lucas's. Yeah, and basically like any offshoots that uh, aren't necessarily Disney approved canon. The way I view it is the other way around. Legends is the real stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people do, because Legends has all the cooler, yeah. you know, more gray area, more interesting stories, more deep lore. And the well-crafted games like this. Yes. It doesn't matter that the graphics are sucky, it's because of the time. It's a good game. Yeah. I, I know that feel. Not with this game, but with others. I don't care that Oom 9, you know, was a droid that had like two minutes of screen time in the <laughs> movies in the games he was really important to me uh is he the one you use in galactic battlegrounds yeah he's the battle droid that is in charge of the trade federation army on naboo mm. for those who don't know yeah i wonder if we should do that game at some point i just don't know because rts's are kind of longer yeah not sure mm. but if you do decide whoop hit the armchair <laughs> Uh, but if you do decide to do it, I'd be down for it. I'm just not sure which one of us would play, or <laughs> if you want to switch it up depending on what faction, what campaign. Yeah, we could probably do that. Um, yeah, so there are, I think, three bonus missions that we'll probably do next episode, and then if we have spare time, if you want, you could try a mission if you want, just to see how it feels. Alright. And we could go over some of the other ships that exist. I don't know if they're unlocked on this file, but on the old one, because I unlocked everything, it'll work. So, yes, we will end this here for now, and we will continue this next time. So, dear viewers, goodbye for now. Goodbye. Goodbye.